South African Weather Service has issued nine weather warnings for Monday, the 25th of September, on the public holiday, which includes a very rare level nine warning for heavy rainfall, leading to flooding. This long weekend, a strong kind of low pressure system moved across the country. On Heritage Day, 22 rainfall records were broken. Citizens of the Cape provinces were stranded and had to be rescued from their home. Numerous roads were flooded, washed away and closed, leaving many people stranded. Rivers burst their banks and this contributed to the flooding this long weekend. People were injured and unfortunately some lost their lives. On Monday, the current low pressure system produced gas and winds. It is definitely very high over here. Look at that. Look at it. Between the 24th and 26th of September 2023, a historically significant storm hit the southern parts of South Africa. As soon as the storm passed, we went to visit my brother-in-law near Kariado in the Kokama Mountains, which is next door to the Babians Kloof, the significance of which will become evident a little later in the video. Coming from an area that regularly sees good rains and lots of water, it never even entered our minds to consider the effects that this amount of water could have on the ground in an area that, usually, sees very little rain. Indeed, as Rian had informed us just a couple days before we arrived, at one point they'd measured over 100 millimeters rainfall in the space of an hour. In fact, the rain gauges were overflowing by the time they checked, and so the full amount of rain remains unknown. Which is why, while exploring Rian's farm, Things didn't go quite as expected when attempting to cross what seemed to be a gentle little stream. I know, so beautiful. Oh, it's got the water here, lekker. Oh, shit. Look at this, nice. So that is exactly why I didn't want to come with my boat. Ah, but this oh, is wow, still very shallow. Oh, we to cross it. This is still very shallow. It's very shallow. It's, it's bubbling out of, the, out of the water, I mean, out of the road. Yeah. I wonder where this water's coming from. It's the first time I see this. Is it, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. It just comes out of the ground. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. I haven't seen this, eh? This section, I encourage you to take note of, as the transformation will be incredible as the water level continues to increase and recovery vehicles attempt to traverse it. What you've just heard is one of the signs trying to tell me not to make the decision that I'm about to make. Heed the warnings and listen to the telltale signs around you. They'll always be there to help guide you. You're about to witness me making the big mistake that got us into this mess, which is the first lesson I needed to learn on this journey. Don't cross water where there is no road. This is terrible. Okay. All right. 
Realizing that we were truly and deeply stuck, Rian took the half hour hike back to fetch his two wheel drive pickup, which we hoped would be enough to aid the landy out of the mess it was in. There were also numerous sinkholes of around half a meter deep that posed an added threat. So while I readied the toe straps, Natasha and Aridin carried rocks from around 50 meters away to fill the holes directly behind the landy. By now around three hours had passed, and with the day ticking by we had lost our mental fight, the most important battle of all. I was now praying for a miracle. There being no signal at all in these mountains, we had to make a decision right now. Either we keep trying, which for the moment was looking hopeless, or we needed to get back to the farmhouse ASAP, where there was a spotty satellite internet service, and start getting the word out. We of course decided on the latter, so we piled into Rian's bucky, only to have it fall into a sinkhole that literally gave way while driving just a few meters away. This was our lowest point, and it would have been disrespectful to keep filming. But the reason for the sinkhole very soon revealed itself to us. This was problem. The ground was increasingly becoming oversaturated with the water that was continuously pouring down the mountain. Things just went from bad to worse. But by sunset, the beginnings of the miracle I prayed for was about to start bearing fruit. But it would be a long journey, even for the angels that were deployed to us. So, Sea Rescue came to our rescue to rescue Robert the Defender and my brother in law's 2x4 who tried to get us out and also got stuck in the process. We've just heard that they've come back from. Um, giving supplies and relief, mercy mission to the Bobbyans Cliff, where the Bobbyans Cliff is actually completely blocked off, is completely flooded, both sides, all three sides actually, our side which is the middle, and also east and west. Anyway, so let's see the progress of this rescue mission. <laughs> The rescue vehicle has just gotten stuck. Um, so this is turning into craziness. This is that section of road which I said earlier to take note of. Look at the amount of water that has turned it marshy and into quicksand in the space of a day. Jeez. It's a wonder that... Oh my <laughs> that's soul. A, that's a Korean's car got through at all. <laughs> How are we going to get back? Yes. There? Is there anything we can, we can help? Is there anything we can do? Cool. Even my feet are getting stuck in this. It's, it's, it's different. Watch. It, it it's like clay. It creates a vacuum. It's like clay. Uh-huh. Sticky. 
Ludovic and his team from NSRI Sea Rescue never gave up. They kept trying to conquer that swamp. But in the end, the Prado became too stuck for even the Land Cruiser to recover, which was also beginning to suffer. But that was when help arrived. And the bush pig recovery master himself, Marcus Oshry, has arrived on scene to maybe rescue the rescuers. Our second angel arrived in the form of Marcus Oshry and his Land Rover Defender, who had cancelled his position of emceeing at an important function because, as he said, and I quote, I can't let a precious landy be lost. And this is where I want to say something. Lace it, Owens. There's not a landy but a landy can let. Exam on it. Crazy. It's just not going in. Marcus left Port Elizabeth after work and did the over two hour trip in one and a half hours only. How he did that in a defender at night, I still don't know. Not only is Marcus also a NSRI Sea Rescue Operations yeah. Controller, but as the owner of Bush Pig Adventures, he gives training in the art of off roading and vehicle recovery and is a brand ambassador for the off road divisions of General Tires and JSC 4x4s to name but a few. I can't think of anyone in the country that's more capable than him to have had there that night. In short order, he immediately began attacking that mucky ledge that barred us from getting to our vehicles. Whoa! Yeah, sliding out. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's okay. We can always change the point of attack. Mm. Certainly a whole lot better than the yeah. high lifter. Certainly a whole lot better. Well, the high lifter in this might have worked better. Yeah, for really? What we're trying to achieve. Oh, because, serious? Because this is slipping. Oh, right. Because it's slipping. I stood amazed as I watched Marcus just keep going on and on while the hours passed by and the moon had long since rose and I realized something. These were guys that had long since conquered the mental challenges of being in these situations, time after time. When one thing failed, there was always another angle of attack, always a positive attitude, 
a culture of never ever giving up. Although he couldn't make it up that ledge, by 10.30 that night he had freed my brother-in-law's bucky so that at least the way was open again to get to the landing. Speaking of our landing, Marcus inspected the situation and we saw that it was leaning over even more as the water continued to push. But we were done. And with the forecast of even more rain coming the day after tomorrow, we were forced to leave it standing there for the night with us wondering what would be awaiting us the next morning. So it's the next morning. The landy has stayed in the river overnight. And uh, the tractor with this morning, early this morning, the 4x4, the fa farmer uh, came with a 4x4 tractor, a huge thing. And uh, <clears throat> with these guys, and uh, we went with the 4x4 tractor to assess that section of road where all the rescue teams were uh, getting stuck in. For them, according to them, the problem is not so much that that spot where the guys couldn't get up that step on the road. For them, for the tractor, the issue is that the, the road before it, the sand is so very soft because it is waterlogged. It's very waterlogged and for them, their concern is that it's just too waterlogged. So, I'm heading my way there now and uh, the rest of the family is going to be following after me. They need to deal with other road issues on the, um, on the farm, which actually gives access to the farm. Um, so they're going to go and help dig some furrows there, because that's what we need to do, is we need to release the water out of the roads. But uh, yeah, what a beautiful walk this is. Such a beautiful area. Incredibly beautiful area. And there's the Babyans over there in the distance. The highest peaks over there. Babyans Cliff. Who, as I explained on the Bucky, um, they are completely, completely isolated. And uh, as a result, they have mercy missions. They are relying on mercy missions to bring them food and supplies. So, my problem seems pretty small in comparison to that. Just look at that. You can see the road there, roughly in the center of the screen, going that way. We're somewhere far into the valley there, to uh, almost to the base of the mountain. And you can hear a roar from the, from the waterfall up there. The drivers of the tractor, they said that they had last seen rainfalls and water flowing like this in this area in 1996. And that's the furrows we need to make. So as you can see, that's playing pretty fast. And if you can see that, and that's down to the stream. And there is the road. As you can see, it's running down mostly this left, uh, left side. But I tell you, as fast as it's flowing out, it's flowing in. That water is coming down this track so fast. Okay, it's pulled up over here. Hopefully this will empty a little bit. We hope so. And there's a few of, me, of these, a few more of these along the way to the worst stretch that I need to do. But the water is flowing so much from up this ravine. This is the furrow that the guys of the tractor, they dug this morning. About, uh, I think it was about seven in the morning. I think the time is now about 10, I'm not sure. I'll look now. But it's flowing pretty well. Look at this. I think you can see that waterfall, beautiful waterfall. There. So much water. 
so much water. Ah, and there's the section up there. So the plan is to try and dig more furrows, hopefully, to be able to release more water out of the, out of the sand trapped there. And then there are these aliens over here. They're a type of pine slash conifer. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's got a very spiky leaf. Ah, see this? Like this. But it's a very thick bush, which is cool. And we plan to cut all of these aliens here and pack it on this road to sort of create flotation for the tractor to get up and hopefully it'll help Robert the Defender to come down without even needing to be towed. That'd be great. And Marcus, Marcus I found your spade. And there is Robert, still standing, thankfully. And here is where the two by four belonging to my brother-in-law got stuck after the failed attempt of pulling Robert out. And he fell into the waterlogged sand over here. I would have shown you earlier how the road, how the track was so spongy with the water beneath it. <sighs> floating, a floating ground. Yep. Okay, so there we are. This is the brush that I'm putting on each uh, tire track and uh, made some extra furrows to let the water run. But now Marcus Austria has let me know from Bush Pigs that they're coming tomorrow morning and I still have all this to do and I don't think it's gonna be possible. So I'm gonna begin with that one. I'm gonna cut down that alien wattle tree, big one, and pack that up as much as I can. And that's probably about as much as I'm able to do before they arrive tomorrow morning. So let's hope that'll be enough. Logs are in. And the brigade has come at last. Okay, let's hope we can get Robert out now. Look at it and think you know what it's trying to do. Ah, oh, Shazam. <laughs> So it turns out that my road building skills weren't the best, but you know what? I'm still an amateur and Marcus is the best. So um, great, he, for safety reasons, the, the, all the branches that I put down actually could have damaged the vehicles. So we've removed them. However, one thing that he says that I did do correctly was that all the furrows that I made to, uh, to remove the water from the road has possibly done 95% of the job. So, cool, that's good to know. Now it's just to break off those poles and uh, start the bridging.
John's vehicle's leaning over quite a bit. And we can't just pull it straight back. If we pull it straight back, we risk her rolling over. So we're actually going to do a dual, a dual tug here. Um, the perpendicular vehicle will be here attached to the um, the running board, which I think is going to be the safest option when I'm looking at hard points, what it is, just to stop the vehicle from falling that way. Unfortunately, there isn't a hard point up high, which is going to give us better leverage, but we're going to need to keep her down this side, and that vehicle will just stop her from tilting over, and the rear vehicle will just pull slowly. The important thing is John keeps his wheels straight and doesn't try and turn and, and do anything, because that's going to change your angles, and we don't want that to happen. Very slow and careful process. Also, what's going to happen with all the water and everything? It's going to create quite a suction, and we need to break that suction first. And that's going to be—I mean, that suction is probably double the weight of what we pull it. So it's going to be a very, very careful process. We don't want to do anything. We've got sunlight. We don't have rain. We've got time, and we're going to take our time. Uh, I blame the snatch trap. No, I'm it's asking. Awesome. It's old. Did you have that out of my eye? Yeah, it's about a winner. It's an old one. Yeah. I don't know I'm going to snatch, but my vehicle's heavier. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going with a four fighter. I stop. Don't hit the hole. Don't let it drop. And for now, I don't think it's moved me any. Okay. Now that we can do it once with the four fighter. Give that a try. The next thing is we're going to airbag your ass up. I was just about to say. And ride it off the airbag. No, no, where are you going to get the airbag underneath? Yeah. Well, we have a farm jack here as well, but I don't think we'll get the purchase on here. I'll probably just see. So, you're going to, have you got a bridle for the front of you? Keep out the way because all the bushes we cannot see unfortunately, but yeah, that's just the way it is. Safety's first. So we need to anchor it this side with a vehicle. Obviously the ideal thing is to be high up from a leverage perspective. We don't have anything high up. So I'm thinking around there. So the strongest place on the Land Rover here is straight through here. Put it, I've got through the chassis. Chain, chain through there, through here. I'll look for brake pipes and stuff on that yeah. side. How it behaves when it Correct. starts going that way is going to be tricky, and that's why with the so, winches we must just work as slow as possible okay. and lots of communication. Mm. I actually think we should have two points on it for the winch, keep tension, and then you pull it literally straight back. <laughs> we must put Hello. Slowly, come this way. Whoa. Whoa. You're going to go in the hole. Yeah. I'm in the rock. I'm in the rock. I'm in the rock. I'm in the rock. I'm in the you can back into that one next.
Brace yourself. But remember, you can't park here, sir. <laughs> you said. <laughs> this is how you fall into a land here. I've got the door. I've got the door. Yeah. I think we're such a slow one. I don't think it's necessary. What do you think? You good? Pilot, ready to go. Good luck. Um, thank you. Okay, John, uh, radio check. Yeah, right. perfect. Uh, wait, where's the... All right, reading loud and clear. Okay, John, you're going to keep your wheels exactly where they are. Are you in neutral and handbrake off? Okay, John, you're going to keep your wheels exactly where they are. Are you in neutral and handbrake off? Okay, Shane, you ready? Okay, Shane, you tight, eh? You tight at the moment. Okay, okay. Okay, guys. Um, okay, Shane, just give it a bit of a tug there. One, one click. Okay, perfect train. Alright, I'm going to start winching. Yeah, mate. Right. Get my control on too. Okay, Quinnell, you ready? Okay, John, we're going to start pulling. There's something that doesn't look as hectic. Just like our first one where it looked like it was dry and we sunk in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it looks... a road. No. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> John, did you try to go up a non-road? I did. Damn you, John. Damn you. Charged. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. That's how you adventure. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. Make sure you just give it a little bit when you go through that spot where you got stuck. 
shackle. Then it snapped off and uh, let's. Oh, you know when I've said that, that's <laughs> There you go, the knights in shining armor. So these are things that when you get tired, the stocks take shortcuts. You've had a long day of recovery, long day of this, long day of that. You make mistakes. Even people that are seasoned and experienced at it make mistakes. Yes. And that is why you should stop each other every now and again and say, listen, let's not take a chance. Listen, let's not take a chance. So planning, 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 planning. Make sure the recovery points underneath your vehicle are put on with high tensile bolts, not mild steel. Because it's a mild steel tensile bolt on some of the vehicles. Marcus, can I just sorry to interrupt yeah, you there? Interject it a little bit. No, no. That little piece that you showed in that broke is that the recovery point that you're referring to? Yes. So that is a mistake from Land Rover in England. They've never told us, they've never told any potential buyer that that is not a recovery point. No, it is a recovery point. <laughs> So that's what I've been told. We need to actually check that with Land Rover. Yeah, we must because yeah. obviously I don't want to make that mistake again. Yeah, which is why I always I make sure that it's got high tensile bolts to it, ten mil high tensile bolts, and I always use a bridle to halve the load on each, as opposed to a single. Yeah, absolutely. Because besides those, there's nothing else. You need to do so some tests and yeah. make sure it's properly rated, like you said. Correct. Yeah, it's got to be a rated recovery point, and you've got to use high tensile as opposed to mild steel. So that was the, the, one of the big learning curves there yeah. is that when you get tired after rescue, you take shortcuts. I've actually got the two snap straps on the table there. We destroyed two snap straps that day. Not recovering Robert the Defender, recovering each other in that muddy spot on the way back. Not on the way there, on the way back. Where we stretched those things so much you could actually hear the fibers start to tear and you could see where they pop like pork sausages. And you can't use those for snatching anymore. Those are not tow ropes. Um, it happens. Those things don't necessarily have a lifespan or a, a limited number of pulls. You can pull them, no problem. Okay? But when the fibers start to break, like you can see those ones there, get rid of it. Do not use it again. So that was a big thing for me. And then making sure, I mean, I've just seen it now last night. I've got a video, what's that called? Yeah. He's up in Pondolo, I don't know, some kookaloo somewhere at the moment doing his trip and he phoned me in a blind panic. He's on this big open field on a river frontage and he's that deep in mud. He's literally gone from hard surface, broken through the surface and gone boom, and he doesn't have a winch. He doesn't have an airbag mm. and he's by himself. So obviously what is, what is my first question to him, which is I ask always around the table, <laughs> have you deflated your tires? Okay, number one. He doesn't have a winch, so how do you get yourself up? He doesn't have an airbag, so he can't jack it up on a spongy surface mm. to put rocks underneath, just to raise it, to give him a bit of a run up. He had a trailer on the back, a tented trailer, so now he can't even push that trailer back by hand because he's in the mud. So he had nothing, and there was no beer on He got up, got out at about office 10 last night. The farmer across, he, he bummed a lift for a fisherman on the river in a boat across to a farmer's house on the other side. The farmer comes to that and says, you're the start. This is December time. This is, happens all the time. Because it's a lovely green pasture. The guys, yeah. and it's literally like you were standing on that slush. You stand on there, you break through. And I mean, it's got the same tires as me on. And it was just covered. There was nothing that he could do. Completely stuck. So don't travel alone. Even when you're going to a Krabi's and that, take two vehicles. If you are going to travel alone, have a winch. I used to hate winches, absolutely hated them, never had a winch, ever. Never needed a winch until I put a winch on. Then I needed a winch. Because then I realized the power and capability of a winch and how you can recover yourself in all sorts of scenarios. What he could have done there, being on a big open plane, he could have taken his spare wheel off, dug a hole, yeah. buried his spare wheel, and now he can winch himself up. So there's so much that you can do with a winch if you know what you're doing with it. Having your snatch blocks, having everything where you can create a block of tackle that just improves 
your strength. I mean, there's, there's loads of YouTube videos which show with a fish, um, the weighing book with fish. What do you call it? I'm not a fish. Yeah, there we go. And where you put the number of pulleys on and you pull it and it shows you how many pounds per square inch, whatever you pull it. And you change the number of blocks and you see how it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as you do it. Um, yeah, because I know the next snatch block, if you've got a, an 8,000 pound winch and you use a snatch, a snatch block, you actually double that up to 60,000 yes. pound. And in this instance with, with them, we use two snatch blocks, so it increases even more. Because in mud, you have that assumption, you have that extra weight that it pulls. So it makes a hell of a difference. And I know carrying all these extra things adds up and adds up with space and weight. It does. But when you're in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you want it. And, and it can really, really help. So, I mean, we use pretty much every little piece of my equipment that we had that day, and others. Just the other point with the team of you, with you, you using the winches and the, the, the kinetic steps and stuff like that, always put a blanket or a mat or something yeah. on that rope because if that thing snaps. Definitely. Even using a kinetic, using a snap show, you know, it's, you think it's going to fling this thing up. You can even take any one of those lines there and just coil it around. Okay, so it's lying loose over. So that if it does snap, that weight of it just drops it to the ground. It's going to come flying back, just drops it down and stops it. It slows it slows it down. It slows the big down. And it adds a weight to it to, to pull it down. So yeah. There, there's no matter what recovery you do, when you do it, how you do it, you will learn something from each time that you do it. Mm. Uh, what is your biggest takeaway from this one? Uh, recovery point. Mm. Making sure that the recovery point that you're using, because we were using that level, it wasn't my level. I know my recovery points. I know I've used it over and over and over. Um, know your vehicle, know what vehicle you're using to do a recovery, don't take shortcuts. And then the three of us together had to like go in tandem and then the bridge and Did you have a snap strap or static line? No, just static line. And that's where the system. biggest. Yeah. It, it's not a mistake, it's what people have. That the difference between using a static line and a kinetic line in mud is talking cheap. Because if you mm. put yourself taut against somebody that's in mud and you just start spinning your whip, you're not yeah. going to go anywhere. Yeah. You've got to create, you've got to use the potential energy to create the kinetic energy. Yeah. So you've got to be flying in order to get that vehicle to pop. Yeah. Without that, with a static line, you are going to go nowhere. Yeah. So remember, we had, we had no signal up in the mountains. Okay. Now, to walk back to the house and to walk back again, just to get maybe some information on the, on the internet, because now this is the whole thing, is that you're so used to getting information on the internet. Now, we eventually, like I was saying on the, on the video, you know, we eventually lost like the mental fight. And the mental fight is actually a really, really huge thing because, you know, we got into a panic situation where the mind froze and you couldn't really think straight anymore because emotions were high in the background i obviously didn't put that into the video i'm not going to expose this you know but essentially that was what was really happening in the background you know um so the first thing i tried was i tried i mean you remember the guy the the, the, the landy was sitting like this right mm. and it was the front right wheel that was down in the water and it was the back left wheel that was that actually up in the air. Yeah. Yes. And obviously that's why I didn't have any traction. So I thought, well, to try and get the thing level, I thought probably the best place to jack it up would be the front right corner, right? But that was in the water, in the sand. There was nothing to put the jack onto. I had a high lift. I had a high lift jack. So what I did was because I, I couldn't figure out a way to mount to place the jack into the water of the front on the front right tire. So what I did, I, I thought, okay, well, let me try put the jack onto the onto the rear right tire. Okay, the side of here, and lift that up, which is what I did. And I started lifting that because I thought if I could do if I could lift it, it would do that. You know, yeah. um, logically that would happen. Except that when I started lifting. What it did was it started lifting that right, that, that rear right, uh, left tire even higher. Well. Even higher. And it was actually starting to lean even more over. Yeah. And the reason being was because the front right wheel, it, no, it actually kept going deeper. Yeah. 
So it was essentially doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reaching yeah. forward. So <laughs> that was, that was, we obviously got a bit of a big fright over there. And so, okay, immediately put it down. Mm. Then I was at a loss. So that night, when we eventually got back to the house and I started putting the word out into the Bushpig group, onto our group, then that night when we eventually got back, midnight or whatever, um, I just decided just to make a post, not asking for any advice or anything like that on Facebook. I don't want to deal with like, you know, a whole lot of trolls and what have you. But, you know, I, I just made a post of our photo, just saying this is where I am right now. Landy's sitting in this position. Cool. All right, so next day, no signal. You know, obviously I'm out in the road because you're trying to do the, the whole waste of a job of putting bronze down. <laughs> <laughs> that was your punishment. <laughs> <laughs> My atonement. When I arrived back to the house at lunchtime, I got a flood of messages, and that's when I found out that, okay, cool, you guys are coming the next morning. Great, rush back out there and start doing the branches. Okay, so when I get back then, late at night, now everything's on a roll. All the cogs are rolling. Man, hundreds of Facebook notifications. I'm like, freak now. Anyway, I start going through them. I just see suggestion after suggestion after suggestion. Everyone being so encouraging. I must have answered 350 comments that night. Oh. But they were brilliant. Those posts had become such a wealth of knowledge. But as I was reading, the, the blood started to drain from my face. Because one of the first suggestions that the guy said was, one of the, one of the guys said, and then it was repeated thereafter, time after time after time, was, why don't you just cut some branches and tied to the, to, the, to, the, to the wheels and create pedals. I'm like, oh crap. Could have done that. Just a while ago, we had a discussion on the bush pig group with Marcus being stuck in the snow. And we were talking about the addition of tire grabbers from Ardendorf to add that to our gear. Now, in the panic that I was at the time, my mind frozen, I never remembered that just one week prior, I went and bought a set and they were sitting under my bloody seat. <laughs> <laughs> they could have worked. I would say, in hindsight, just alone, maybe 50-50 before my brother-in-law did the tow, because in the position that I was at that first time, originally, as I got stuck, if I put the grabbers on right then and there, then quite possibly it might have gotten up. But now, what about now after the, the vehicle was down there? Second suggestion that came up, that was brilliant, was, well, the guy said, obviously, he posed the obvious thing of, listen, it's the front right corner that needs to be lifted up, you know, and this is how you do it, and I never thought of it. You take the spare wheel, the spare wheel will actually create a flotation in the water on that sand and mount the high lift jack onto the spare wheel. That, combined with the tire grabbers, <coughs> would have been out, because we would have been able to lift it up, pack the rocks underneath, that front right wheel, yeah. we would have been up. There would have been no need for extra mm. recovery action. Yeah, from a mechanical yeah. perspective. Marcus, have you got, got experience of those tire yep. and, and, and your experience? They got us out the ship. Oh, He's the know, one that suggested this. Oh, are you the one? Okay. Yeah, same mm. principle. Oh, okay. That, 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 yeah. that whole panic state of mind is, is, is a very big thing. The other thing to, to get into, and this isn't, this isn't a, a common problem, mm. that when you get stuck, stop. Yeah. Don't keep trying. Yes. Stop. Yes. And then don't go, oh, let me just try this. Let me yes. just try that. No, you put everything on. Yes. You go to war with all your guns. Yes. You deflate your tires. You put your things on. You do this. You, you do everything and then try and get up. But every time you, oh, let me just try this and let me just try that, you just go further yeah. and further and further into the ship. Yes. So, makes sense. Rather take your time to save your time. Mm. No, good.